Apparently, there is a significant mortgage fraud happening in the GTA. According to this website, 47% of Canadians believe mortgage fraud is a common occurrence. And how much of the fake income impact the real estate bubble in the GTA? In the past, I have covered some of the mortgage fraud stories and since then, there have been far more cases circulating in real estate. This is not looking good. There is a specific HSBC leak case that has been making headlines for the past few weeks. And in my opinion, I think that in impacted the GTA home prices quite a bit during the pandemic. Let's take a look right after this. Hey, welcome back to another video on the AV Team Real Estate channel. I'm Antonio and I am a local real estate agent in the GTA. If you have been enjoying the weekly video from this channel, don't forget to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel so that you can be shared with more people who want to get updated on the real estate market in Toronto. Greatly appreciate it. If you have any inquiries about the real estate, don't hesitate to contact me via the first link in the description down below. Going back to the topic of how many Canadians believe that mortgage fraud is a common occurrence. The number of mortgage fraud cases is rising quickly and more and more people are falling victims to scams. In fact, mortgage fraud increased by 30% in the second quarter of 2022 compared to the pre-pandemic period. This is really wild if you think about it. And every fifth person in Canada has no problem committing such a crime. Scammers are everywhere and it's tough to stay safe and avoid fines or prison time. In this post, you learn everything about mortgage fraud and how to prevent it and stay safe from our private investigator in Toronto who have first-hand experience. The shocking truth is that according to this survey, 20% of Toronto residents will have no problem committing this mortgage fraud. Isn't it scary that this is the common mentality toward mortgage fraud? This is the article of a whistleblower by the name of DM who reported the four pages claiming that there are numerous questionable fake income cases as a result of huge mortgages. Before we go into into more details, let's have a little background on the whistleblower who reported the case. He is currently a former mortgage approval team member at a small HSBC on the outskirts of Toronto, specifically in Aurora that is. And before that, he completed his master's degree in business from Vancouver Island University where he studied fake income mortgage fraud. Ironically, he then joined the mortgage approval team at HSBC in Aurora in February of 2022 where he has so many questions questions about the loan books that don't look right to him. He is a new immigrant to Canada as an international student from India, making him a minority among mostly Chinese Canadian co-workers at the Aurora branch. I want to make it as objectively possible based on the assessment DM made and I will break it down in this video and would love to hear your comment below if you don't agree. DM asserted that since 2015, more than 10 Toronto area HSBC branches have facilitated the insurance of at least 500 million in home loans to diaspora buyers who purportedly had exaggerated income or fabricated employment statuses in China. The individual further noted a significant surge in these fraudulent activities during the pandemic, attributing it to the plausibility of borrowers claiming remote work arrangements in other countries while residing in Canada to evade the COVID-19. According to the whistleblower, while a bank of Aurora scale would typically issue approximately 23 million in residential loans annually, this particular branch dispersed 88 million in mortgages in 2020 and over 50 million in 2021. That was a tremendous increase during the pandemic. As a new immigrant and working as a mortgage approval team, clearly the whistleblower was not accustomed to being part of the 20% of Toronto residents that would have no problem committing mortgage fraud. In this case, the fake income and decided to send an email to his senior bank executive. This is the quote that he had. I am going to reveal potential mortgage fraud at HSBC Bank Canada and possibly some employees benefited from the fraud, financially pocketing thousands of dollars, which called the proceeds of crimes. 
In case you wonder, I got you covered for some example that he brought up, and it is quite shocking as to why these cases were approved. In a case that was included from DM on the report, a lady works in a casino part-time but has a 1.4 million mortgage and shows over 300,000 in annual income. In addition, she takes money as a benefit from the government for her two kids. Let's stop for a second. A lady who works part-time claimed that she makes 300,000 and on top of that, the government still granting her benefit for the two kids. If that doesn't look suspicious, I don't know what is. Let's move on to another HSBC mortgage client who claimed to earn 700000 annually for remote work in China while simultaneously living in Canada and paying a 10000 student loan. Won't you question if she makes that much money, why would you get a high interest student loan? This is fascinating. And another woman who owns homes in Aurora, Markham and Scarborough work part-time as a hairdresser while also claiming to earn 536280 at a business manager job in Guangzhou, China. This is not a made-up story. Here is the document about the claim that she makes over 500k in this letter while working as a part-time hairdresser. Here is the bureau analysis of the most startling story in addition to these cases. Revealed that a lady who established her HSBC Aurora Bank account in 2013 and identified herself as a homemaker with no annual income is the owner of at least four homes in Toronto. However, her Toronto account quickly began to receive enormous sums of wire transfer from HSBC China account and it was used to pay out high value checks to other parties for the acquisition of real estate. And yet, in 2020, the same woman applied for another HSBC Canada mortgage claiming to earn 763000 remotely from her job in China. And here is a letter from DM to the senior executive questioning a high income earner who has a student loan of 10000 and no other investment outside of the mortgage. These are all examples of all kind of fake Chinese income mortgage fraud. But obviously, there are much more type of mortgage fraud surrounding by the entire GTA. You could click the link above for a video that I made last year in 2023 about the title, identity, and mortgage fraud, if you are interested. But most noticeable is a result of the temporary closure of Canadian casinos due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Professional money launderers began to diversify their money laundering method, and FinTrack observed a rise in money laundering typologies involving transferring large sums of funds to Canada from foreign money services businesses, often located in China, notably Hong Kong and the laundering of the funds primarily through the real estate, securities, automotive, and legal professions. These wire transfers from China were routed into bank accounts of multiple unrelated individuals in Canada that serve as money meals in Byzantine networks involving Canada-based real estate developers, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, and banks. According to FinTrack, this bank account holder from the Chinese diaspora frequently claimed they were unemployed homemakers, office manager, or student. After taking everything into account and comparing the data sources used in this article with earlier findings verified by the Kulin Commission in British Columbia, the Bureau estimated that between 2014 and 2023, well over 200 billion in funds from the Vancouver model and Toronto method may have flowed into Toronto and Vancouver's real estate through covert diaspora network and Canadian financial institutions. The official said money laundering is increasing in Canada and DM believe that Chinese income mortgage fraud has boosted home prices in Toronto is likely true. But it also should apply to Vancouver and Montreal real estate prices. The official noted that other nations require tax agency to verify income for mortgages, which isn't the case in Canada. Once money enters the hand of the purchaser, they are given the money or the mortgage payment are taken care of. A few years later, that house was sold. Equity, cash out, money wash. And here is the problem. Organized crime isn't just laundering their ill-gotten gains like any other business person. When they buy real estate, they generate down payment, then get a mortgage for the rest. Why buy one property when you can buy four? I'm sure that has impacted our multiple offer situation when they are directly competing with locals and permanent residents and trimming the home prices to the whole new next level. Reading this article one way or the other, it was confirmed that it significantly impacted home prices, especially during the pandemic. And if Canada does not strengthen the mortgage regulation approval, this could be the trend going forward. Beside the housing supply, in my opinion, this is one factor that speaks to me as to why home prices 
are rising so quickly. Do you agree any of this? Comment down below as I'm curious about your opinion as well. I hope you enjoyed this video as I'm trying to break it down from this article on fake income fraud. Don't forget to like the video, consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.